Good evening. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Vettelson Foundation and my fellow directors, Maurizio Morello, Gary Beecham, Eugene Grisanti, along with Nima Saran, Secretary of the Foundation, I would like to welcome you to the 29th awarding of the Vettelson Prize to Dr. Stephen Sparks of the University of Bristol. Dr. Sparks is currently the director of the Bristol Environmental Risk Research Center at the university. A brief overview of his extraordinary and voluminous accomplishments are set forth in your program. Dr. Sparks joins a group of distinguished scientists who have been awarded the Vettelson Prize. Beginning more than a half a century ago with Dr. Maurice Ewing Lamont's first director. Dr. Jean Jouzel, recipient of the prize in 2013, is here with us tonight and we welcome him back. As you know, the prize is given for outstanding achievement in the sciences resulting in a clear understanding of the Earth, its history, or its relation to the universe. This pursuit has, and always will be, an inviting challenge for mankind to pursue. The prize was established by the Vettelson Foundation in 1959, and this year's recipient, Dr. Sparks, was selected by a six-member jury appointed by the president of Columbia University. The Vettelson Foundation itself was established in 1955 by a gift from Georg Unger Vettelsen shortly before he died. Mr. Vettelsen, a Norwegian born in Oslo, began his career as a naval architect after graduating from Imperial College in London. He emigrated to New York prior to 1920, where he eventually met and married my grandmother, Maud Minnell, the widow of Ambrose Minnell, a distinguished alumnus of Columbia University. After marrying in 1932, the Vettelsons pursued his lifelong love of sailing with the purchase of E.F. Hutton's Hussar, which they renamed Vima, a combination of their two names, Vettelson and Maud. More than 20 years later, she would play an important role in Lamont's history. With the Second War approaching, the Vettelsons became active in supporting the Norwegian resistance against Germany. After America entered the war, Vettelson was made a U.S. citizen commissioned as a commander of the U.S. Naval Reserve, and in the summer of 1943, he was assigned to the Allied Special Forces headquarters in London to coordinate resistance activities in southern Norway and Denmark. At the conclusion of the war in recognition of his service, Vettelson received nearly a dozen awards from five countries, including the United States. In an interesting side note, my grandmother also received the highest award from Norway in recognition individually of her support. After the war, Vettelson returned to private life where he resumed his quest for stronger economic and cultural ties between Norway and America. In addition to his successful career as the executive of the Norwegian American Line, he co-founded the Scandinavian Airline System, now known as SAS. He became an officer and director of the American Scandinavian Foundation based here in New York whose mission is to promote cultural ties between America and Scandinavia. Coincidentally, shortly before Vettelson's death, Dr. Ewing of Lamont was searching for a vessel capable of global oceanographic research. The ship he found was, by happenstance, Vima, the Vettelson's old yacht. A short time later in 1958, with a grant from the foundation to support the publication of research findings of Vima cruises, the beginning of a long relationship between the Vettelson Foundation and Lamont Doherty began. As the foundation has grown, its support has widened to many other research institutions. These include, among many, Woods Hole, Scripps, University of Washington, Oregon State, MIT, BIOS, University of Texas, University of Miami, University of Rhode Island, along with Lamont. Of those many annual grants, the majority are designed to support studies seeking to better understand the complex Earth systems that affect the variability of global climate. Over the past 20 years alone, the Vettelson Foundation has made more than $75 million in grants directed to this area of climate research, the vast majority of which were unrestricted funds. More than 20% of that support 
has been directed to Lamont Doherty, reflecting the long-held respect of the institution, its leadership by the foundation and its directors. Dr. Sean Solomon, who became director of Lamont in 2012, has had an extraordinarily rich and diverse career, which if I tried to summarize proper, properly, would mean we probably would not have dinner for quite some time. However, a few highlights. Dr. Solomon graduated with his PhD in geophysics from MIT in 1971, where he continued to conduct research and teach for the next two decades. He went on to become the director of the Carnegie Institution's Department of Terrestrial Magnetism for nearly 20 years before, me, before assuming his directorship of Lamont. He continues as head of the Messenger mission to Mercury, which followed previous exploratory missions, Magellan to Venus, the Mars Global Surveyor, and the Grail mission to the Moon. Dr. Solomon is a member of the National Academy of Sciences and the American Academy of Arts and Sciences. Most recently, this past autumn, Dr. Solomon was awarded the National Medal of Science, recognizing his many achievements, and joined two previous Lamont honorees, Maurice Ewing and Wallace Broker. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Sean Solomon. <clears throat> Thank you, Ambrose, and let me add my personal uh, welcome to all of you. This is the 18th Bettelson Prize Ceremony and Dinner. Uh, I want to say a few words about our appreciation for the vision and the legacy of the George Unger Bettelson Foundation. We are here tonight uh, on, because of that foundation to honor the outstanding contributions of one of today's leaders in earth science. So I would like to join Mike Purdy uh, and the trustees of Columbia University in thanking uh, the G. Unger Vettelson Foundation uh, for making possible the prestigious scientific tradition that we are continuing tonight. Columbia University is honored to host tonight's award ceremony and to present the Vettelson Prize for outstanding achievement in the earth sciences. I especially want to thank Ambrose Monell and several of his colleagues from the Vettelson Foundation who are here tonight, including Maurizio Morello, Gary Beecham, Nima Saran, uh, and their colleagues who couldn't be with us. Thank you very much. The Foundation's profound appreciation uh, for the power of Earth science to expand the frontiers of knowledge for the benefit of humanity is rare and exemplary. Your generous and sustained commitment to the support of research and discovery conducted by institutions such as Lamont Doherty Earth Observatory is deeply appreciated. Among those here tonight are dozens of Lamont's research scientists. You might not know that, they're out of uniform. But I'm sure that every one of them joins me in thanking the Vettelson Foundation for its extraordinary support of our institution and our science which this prize profoundly represents. Thank you. I want to mention to you, in case you uh, uh, avoided sitting on this on your chair, that at your table are copies of a DVD uh, like this one. It's entitled Montserrat's Andesite Volcano, a video field investigation of the Soufrier Hills volcano, the 2015 edition. Uh, it is a product of David Lee, who's here tonight, and Stephen Sparks, who of course is here tonight. It's aimed at first year geology students. It's suitable for high school students uh, who are interested in science. Uh, this particular package has versions in four different languages, and you are all invited to take a complimentary copy home with you as a memento of this evening. Uh, there's, there's a lot of uh, Stephen Sparks on this video, so you'll have many opportunities to relive this evening as well. Anyway, uh, let me announce, uh, as the nearly last thing I say at this point, that uh, the attendance at this evening is the largest we've ever had at a Vettelson Prize dinner. And I think I think the size of tonight's guest list is a testament to the far-reaching impact of the work of tonight's prize winner. The entire ceremony is so that we can present 
the 2015 Bettelson Prize to, to Stephen Sparks. It has been 55 years since the first Vettelson Prize was awarded to Morris Ewing, whom my colleagues, of course, know as a geophysicist of extraordinary breadth and Lamont's first director. I am honored to follow in Ewing's footsteps at Lamont, but tonight I'm delighted to welcome the many family members, friends, and colleagues of Stephen Sparks who have come from around the country, indeed around the world, to celebrate his work on the occasion of his receipt his receipt of the premier honor in the earth sciences, the Vettelson Prize. Stephen Sparks is the world's leading volcanologist. A hallmark of his scientific work, which spans more than four decades, is that Stephen combines novel ideas with fluid dynamical models, and he tests those ideas and models with insightful field observations, both of the geological record of ancient eruptions and of active volcanic systems. He was the first to bring such breadth and rigor to the study of terrestrial magmatic and volcanic processes. He's written landmark papers on such processes as bubble nucleation and degassing in subsurface magmas, the interaction of magmas with surrounding rock and consequent changes to magma chemistry and eruptive styles, the formation of pyroclastic flows, the formation of calderas, and the physics of volcanic plumes in the atmosphere. He has applied his models to major historical and recent eruptions in Iceland, in Italy, in Montserrat, and in other volcanic areas, and the detailed chemical, petrological, and physical characteristics of these volcanic deposits in turn illuminate and sharpen his model. Beyond his towering scientific contributions, Stephen Sparks has been an eloquent, enthusiastic, and tireless spokesman in the media and in public lectures for earth science and for science more broadly. And importantly, Stephen Sparks led the international efforts to monitor and forecast the multi-year eruptions of the Superior Hills volcano in Montserrat that began in 1995. I want to say a few words from Frank Savage, who was the governor of Montserrat during the first few years of those eruptions, who wrote me to say that he deeply regrets uh, that he could not join us tonight, and he asked me to read a few lines from his letter so that Stephen may hear them. He actually asked me to read his whole letter, but it's rather long. <laughs> anyway, Savage wrote, in 1997, Professor Sparks was instrumental in setting up the risk assessment panel for assessing volcanic risk in Montserrat. That panel later developed into the Scientific Advisory Committee, which continues to monitor developments and to advise the governments of Montserrat and the United Kingdom. This represented an enlightened and novel approach, which took involvement of an international group of scientists closely and collectively yet rationally into those humanitarian aspects of the crisis where the science perspective could make an even bigger contribution. Professor Sparks provided excellent and collegial leadership in making sure the thrust of volcanology in Montserrat extended across the boundary from purely academic research interests into a meaningful applied resource at the disposal of administrators and the public. This required diplomatic skills with reluctant colleagues and with the UK government political directorate alike. And Professor Sparks was probably the only person with the vision and skills who could make it happen in such a balanced and congenial way. So you get a picture of what Steve Sparks did. So tonight, Stephen Sparks will be presented with the 29th Vettelson Prize Medal as he joins several generations of recipients whose extraordinary achievements in the earth sciences have been recognized with this prize. Making that presentation will be Columbia University's Executive Vice President for Research, 
though it is now my pleasure to introduce my long-term friend and colleague, Michael Purdy. Professor Sparks, if I could invite you up uh, here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sean. It's great to, uh, to see everyone here this evening. So many good friends uh, and colleagues that I haven't seen for too long. Welcome. It's wonderful to see you all, and especially Ambrose and Maurizio. I have not seen you for too long either. Welcome. It's a wonderful evening. And uh, the evening, of course, is exclusively to honor Professor Stephen Sparks, and it's a, a genuine privilege to recognize someone of his outstanding professional stature. As Sean's already mentioned, it was on a, an evening in March 55 years ago on this very stage that Doc Ewing stood, not as the founding director of Lamont Geological Observatory, but as the 1960 Vettelson Laureate. University President Grayson Kirk presented him with that first prize as Vettelson President Henry Walters looked on. <clears throat> the Vettelson Foundation set a number of important precedents that night. Their vision was prescient. Ideas of continental drift and plate tectonics were only tiny glimmers in 1960. The ocean's role in the control of global climate was not understood at all. Earth science in general and marine geology and geophysics in particular had no robust overarching framework within which it could be understood and quantified. The foresight displayed by the leaders of Vettelson all those years ago the foresight to support the best geoscience research at the nation's leading universities has had impact around the globe that is in no way linearly related to the magnitude of the investment. If you want proof that the ideals laid down 55 years ago are still alive today, then I suggest you simply review the list of accomplishments and appreciate the breadth and depth of the impacts that this evening's honoree, Professor Stephen Sparks, has had on the science of volcanology, which is a perfect segue into the moment in tonight's ceremony when I actually present the 2015 Vettelson Medal to Professor Sparks. Professor Sparks. Thank you all. Now I will read the uh, citation that goes along with uh, the award. Over a career spanning more than four decades, you have revitalized the fields of volcanology and petrology. Your discoveries regarding how volcanoes behave and how they are fed by deep magmatic systems have forever improved our practical understanding of volcanic hazards around the globe. You turned what were mostly descriptive disciplines into a mature science in which field observations, physics, and chemistry are combined to address general processes as well as local observations of plutonic and volcanic deposits. Your work monitoring and analyzing the eruptions of Montserrat Sufria Hills volcano that began in 1995 helped to show how small variations in physical conditions within a volcano's magma chamber can turn a steady eruption into an explosive one. 
You pioneered methods for assessing the dangers posed by volcanic eruptions, helping governments to improve decisions about evacuations and rebuilding. Through your extensive field work and fluid dynamical models, you have bridged gaps between the phenomenological, physical, and mathematical sciences to make sounder and clearer our understanding of the dynamic Earth. Due to your tireless efforts, physical volcanic models and volcanic observations now integrate a wide scientific community and follow-on research is rapidly advancing. An outstanding researcher and educator, you are an inspiration to scientists young and old and an effective and enthusiastic spokesperson for the field. As one colleague has so accurately stated, there are two distinct phases in the development of volcanology and petrology, before and after Stephen Sparks. In recognition of your remarkable contributions to the advancement of earth sciences, it gives me great pleasure on behalf of the trustees of Columbia University and the trustees of the G. Unger Vetlesen Foundation to award you the 2015 Vetlesen Prize. Congratulations. Professor Solomon, Professor Purdy, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Vet Lesson laureates are a veritable who's who of outstanding earth scientists of the last several decades. So I feel deeply privileged, honored, surprised, and fortunate to accept the Vet Lesson Prize. Sean, thank you for your generous words and to Mike too. Um, I should perhaps uh, go away from the speech and say that when I came in here, I was offered a Manhattan and then when I got into the party, I was offered a, uh, a vodka martini, but I skewed drinking, that, uh, uh, drinking them because of uh, the speech tonight. <laughs> this is an occasion to recognize and thank many people and institutions that have made this day possible. I start by thanking the G. Unger Vetlesen Foundation and Lamont Doherty Earth Observatory for the wonderful occasion. Thanks to, for, to Miriam and the LDO staff for their superb organization of this week. I, yeah. I thank those who nominated me and the Vet Lesson Committee for choosing me. It's an extraordinary and emotional experience to be surrounded by many colleagues, friends, and family who have been important in my life in this superb setting. So I would like to celebrate tonight collaboration, cooperation, friendship, and family. Most medals and prizes in science recognize the achievement of individuals. However, much of science advances by the collective efforts of many individuals, sometimes competing, but more often collaborating. Many of the major challenges in earth science require interdisciplinary work. Collaborating with mathematicians and physicists has been important to much of my own research. Tonight's an opportunity to thank, in particular, a long and stimulating professional relationship and friendship with Herbert Huppert. Thank you, Herbert. Yeah. Great, great institutions nurture cooperation in research between scientists. I have been lucky in my career to have been associated with great organization, including Earth Sciences in Cambridge University, and the Graduate School of Oceanography at the University of Rhode Island. Bristol University has been my academic home, though, since 1989, and I feel particularly proud of having worked closely with Bernie Wood to start building the process of uh, forming a world-class earth science department at Bristol. The school is characterized by great collegiality and a certain degree of creative anarchy, possibly resulting from Bernie and my personality, so I thank my Bristol colleagues, past and present, for their support. Another institution close to my heart is the Montserrat Volcano Observatory, which was created in the heat of a major volcanic emergency from nothing by the collective efforts of many scientists, notably from the Caribbean, Br uh, Britain, and the USA. 
the eruption of the Soufre Hills volcano on Monstrat was a formative experience, both in terms of the science and the chance to apply science to support the people of Monstrat. Friendship is a great gift, and I have been so lucky to have friends around the world, partly as a consequence of the nomadic life of an academic geologist. My family and I have great personal friends on both sides of the pond. The USA is our second home, in particular Rhode Island, the state with the smallest sized and biggest heart. Several of our friends from the UK, Rhode Island, and other parts of the world have taken the trouble to come to New York this evening to join the celebration, and I'd like to say how much the Sparks family appreciates you being here. Finally, I've been and continue to be supported by a wonderful family. My brother and I were raised by our devoted father, Kenneth, in a slightly chaotic bachelor household in the cathedral city of Chester in the north of England. I owe a great deal to him in learning to love to cook, most forms of sport, music, and the outdoors derive from him. Last week, my dear wife and I, Anne, uh, Anne and I, celebrated our 44th wedding anniversary. Anne, of course, has kept my feet well and truly on the earth. And we have two wonderful, handsome sons, <laughs> Andrew and Daniel, who are making their, own, uh, making their own way in life. Andrew and his lovely wife, Alicia, who couldn't be here tonight, have recently produced our first grandson, the adorable Luca. <laughs> Daniel and the lovely Gemma are to marry on the 4th of July, which I think to celebrate our connections with, the, the, with the, our American friends. So it's uh, going to be a great, it's been a great year for the Sparks. I finish on a note of optimism on the role of science. We have only one Earth, and there are many challenges ahead. Earth science's sensu lato is the key science for the 21st century to make sure our grandchildren inherit an Earth which is as beautiful and wondrous as the one we have all, enjo we have all enjoyed. Thanks again for the honor of the Vecleston Prize. Thank you, Stephen. Congratulations again. Now for tonight's closing remarks. I'm delighted to introduce the Executive Director of Columbia University's Earth Institute, my friend and colleague, Stephen Cohen. Thank you, Sean. Uh, what a wonderful, warm evening in this wonderful, iconic space. On behalf of the Earth Institute, let me conclude this evening's proceedings by congratulating the, 19, the 2015 Betlison Prize awardee, uh, Professor Stephen Sparks. In the words of Earth Institute science writer Kevin Krejcik, Professor Sparks taught us that, quote, volcanoes can have multiple personalities, peaceful one minute, explosive the next. And Professor Sparks has untangled these complicated states on land and at sea, improving our ability to see deadly eruptions coming. Congratulations, Professor Sparks. I'd also like to acknowledge and thank the Betleson Foundation trustees that have joined us here tonight, Ambrose Monell, Maurizio Morello, Gary and Faye Beecham. We are really grateful uh, for your support of this award and of the, the Lamont Observatory. The Lamont Darity Earth Observatory, and indeed the entire Lamont campus, are the scientific heart of the Earth Institute. The importance of Earth science and Earth observation is growing as our population grows. The crucial question confronting humanity is how do we extract our needs from this planet without destroying it? On an increasingly crowded planet, the scale of production of everything has grown and with it, we see an increased draw on the Earth's resources. If we don't develop an economic system less dependent on the one-time use of natural resources, then our ability to live the way we live today won't continue. Wonderful evenings like this will come to an end unless we learn how to develop a sustainable and renewable resource-based economy. The management, which is my field of study, is actually more than finance, strategy, and marketing. 
The effective managers of the 21st century must be sustainability managers. The leaders and CEOs of the 21st century need to understand basic environmental processes in order to be effective managers. Decision makers must have insight into the natural resources that sustain their organizations or businesses. They need to know the costs and uses of energy, water, and raw materials. They have to understand the impact of their production on the natural environment. To be sustainability managers, we need to enhance our understanding of our home planet. And to do that effectively, we need great philanthropic leadership, such as the historic work of the Vetlison Foundation. We need to provide more public and private funding of Earth system science. Our researchers are spending far too much of their time in the hunt for resources instead of spending that time in the field and in laboratories. The Earth Institute is pursuing partnerships with organizations all over the city, state, and nation and globe to fund the critical work supported tonight by this wonderful foundation. What could be more important? And while our knowledge of the Earth continues to grow, our ignorance of some of its most fundamental processes remains staggering. Humanity requires far more Earth observation and analysis than we have completed to date. The work has just begun. The scientists on our Le Mans campus and tonight's prize winner are among the world's top Earth system scientists. And I'm confident that as our knowledge grows, we'll learn how to develop an economic life that maintains rather than destroys our planet's resources. I'm counting on human ingenuity to solve the sustainability problems that humankind faces. Earth observation and analysis is not a luxury item, but a necessity. Tonight, we acknowledge excellence in the science of understanding our home planet. I thank the Foundation again for its support, Professor Sparks for his superb work, and all of you for coming tonight to celebrate these remarkable scientific achievements. Thank you very much, and good evening.